Oh hi, nice to see you. I am Navjot Kaur, a third year PhD student in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. It's a Sunday and still I'm working in the lab. Wondering why? Because I want to tell you a story. I work on the development of paper-based, rapid and inexpensive point-of-care diagnostics. Oh my god, this is a mouthful of topic. And to explain the jargon to you, let me take you on an expedition into my research world. Whenever we fall sick and show some symptoms, we visit our doctor. Many times the doctor asks for some tests. You have to go to a clinical laboratory with these fancy and expensive instruments and train technicians. Imagine if all this hassle could be replaced by something available at the point of care, the patient's home or the doctor's clinic. So, in developed settings, Point of care diagnostics would mean having these home test kits which you can administer on your own. But more importantly, point of care diagnostics have an application in the low resource settings where even a visit by the doctor is a rare event. And that is what point of care diagnostics aims to empower them. So now that we understand the idea of point of care diagnostics, let's build one. So let's try to figure out what are the prerequisites to build point of care diagnostics. The first step in the current diagnostic setup is that we have to go and provide our samples at a lab. This sample then undergoes various processes to isolate the biomarker of interest. A biomarker. It's a particular molecule, protein or a characteristic that helps us identify a disease. For example, we have these Aadhaar numbers now in India which help us identify each individual. Similarly, high cholesterol levels that tell you that something is going on wrong with your heart. The final step is to identify the disease. Now that we have established the prerequisites, let's try to address these challenges one by one, starting with the movement of fluids. People came up with the idea of microfluidics, where things were brought down to the micron levels, compatible with handling of small sample volumes. The drawback with microfluidics has been the associated required equipment, which make it unsuitable for point of care diagnostics. That is where paper based microfluidics showed potential. As you can clearly see in this video, the green colored fluid is flowing into this piece of paper without any pumping requirement. This powerless movement of fluid has been well exploited in the commercially available pregnancy strips, which is a huge success. The next ingredient that we are after is the biomarker, and I work with DNA. It is a rope-like structure present in all living organisms and carries all the information necessary for our existence. So much that it hates being a DNA molecule. Here's a picture of mine with my lab mates. See how all of us look so different, with different heights, complexion, hair type, genders, and different smiles. Similarly, each of the infectious agents have distinctive DNA, which can be used to identify their presence in our body. Thankfully, we don't have dinosaurs anymore. And if any of you still see them, you're probably on blue crystal. All you can do is run. And I hope you have some clothes on. I use DNA to identify the bacteria that causes tuberculosis, which mostly affects our lungs. Tuberculosis is a huge global challenge. India is one of the six high burden countries of the world. Think of this as a problem of finding a blue ball from a huge box. It would be very difficult to find the balls if there are just three of them. But the problem becomes simpler if somehow we can increase the number of balls. Consider I have one copy of the DNA. I put it in a photocopier and produce many identical copies of the same. Next challenge is how to visualize the DNA. Can we go up with our binoculars and see it? But, 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 it's not gonna work. As I told you, that DNA is this rope-like structure with these grooves, where small dye molecules can go and sit. They show fluorescence, which can be seen as a color change from, say, orange to green in this case. Since it's a diagnostic device, it has to undergo multiple tests and clearances to finally reach the user's hand. WHO has an assured criteria for making point-of-care diagnostics. With my research on TB diagnostics, I aim to provide an affordable diagnostic tool for people in such low resource settings. Should be able to catch low numbers. There's a reason why Karina Kapoor advertises for pregnancy strips and not Virat Kohli. Though I wonder it would be a good idea for Virat Kohli to do that. The remaining criteria are user-friendly, rapid and robust, equipment-free and deliverable to the end user. So that's what I do. Working day in, day out to produce results to get closer to producing a point-of-care diagnostic for infectious disease diagnosis. But still, there's a lot to do. So getting back to work. <laughs>